So, um, I guess you're all familiar with what's going on with Chris D'Elia and you know Brian Callan. You know they're going through their issues at the moment, and um, for the most part, all the comics have essentially what said you know the standard party line. Some people have kind of refused to comment on it, um, and others have sort of like you know just said what they needed to be said in terms of covering the basis. But there was obviously, obviously it's a wider question to be had in terms of, um, especially with the Chris D'Elia story, where essentially he's in trouble because he treated the girls like shit. I think for the most part most people were aware that he was a little bit of a, you know, he was a little bit of a hound, right? He went on road and when he was on road, it, it seemed like he didn't waste time trying to, um, you know, uh, liaise with some young females. So that's not the really issue. The issue is that he just didn't treat them that well. But I guess it does really open up a topic in terms of uh, where do you draw the line in terms of power imbalances, which I'm not really a fan of, I think it's a little bit G-A-Y to be, you know, relate to be kind of talking about um, really messy and awkward sexual encounters as power imbalances. I don't really think that's true. If anything, women usually have the majority of the power in that, in that kind of exchange, but hey, topic for another day. But it does kind of open up an interesting question as to how um, the celebrity should treat or should kind of conduct themselves when somebody that's infatuated with them, who happens to be a fan, is also sexually attracted to them. Like, what do you actually do? Especially when you have, you know, especially if you're a dude and you have loads of groupies, or even the other way, other way around, like, how do you kind of carry yourself? And what's the best way to go about things? In my personal experience, or my, from, my pers from my point of view, having read loads of books, especially the Keith Richards book, um, especially the Steven Tyler book, from what I've seen, groupies were like an instrumental part in the formation of some of your you know your favorite bands they contributed inadvertently to some of your favorite songs and they're by and large are the reason why some of your bands are successful as they are right and i think maybe the modern day groupie has changed somewhat but i think the idea of it still being this person who is clearly infatuated by you to the extent that they're willing to exchange sexual favors in order just to get closer to the band I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing, especially if it's between two consenting adults. Um, and I also think it's not a bad thing for the actual talent or the person who it is to want to take advantage of this rare moment in time where they happen to be, you know, loved or admired by men and then, you know, kind of lusted upon by women at a certain point of time because i guess it doesn't it doesn't last forever even if you're crystalia whoever you are right you, that kind of hop for thing doesn't last forever so there is a moment in time that you kind of feel as if you need to capitalize on to some certain extent um and it's kind of so maybe stand-up is different but of course in music it is kind of part of the rock and roll persona motif right it's this it's in the same lineage as wearing you know copious amounts of wristbands and covering yourself in tattoos and you know spangly trousers and you know um, high-heeled shoes this is part of it so i think it gets messy it gets weird in my personal experience for me if it was me and i was chris i'd guess i would just say i wouldn't deal with fans i'll just kind of rule it out completely especially because you know he's re he's in a really um unenviable position you know it depends where, where you look at it. he's one of the only comedians that has a very probably he's only yeah i don't think i can't think of a lot of stand-up comics that have f a lot of female fans he might be in the minority right so so oh, he's, he's a bit of an anomaly in that way and then he's an anomaly because a lot of the female fans you have are young because he popped off in on vine so that kind of puts him in a weird um conundrum in a weird place but i still think because of how young they might be depending on where you know um depending on how they kind of stumbled upon his content he really does owe it to himself to either be overly nice and overly accommodating and just make them feel really special and make whatever encounter they have to be you know completely pain-free or he owes it to him to kind of push them to the side and say hey this isn't happening because I i'd rather you be a fan than us cross that boundary it needs to be one or the other it can't be both unfortunately and um Bert crash actually makes that point here um, talking to Tom Segura during Two Bears One Cave. I'm going to quickly play that clip for you. When uh, all the comic guys, they were, uh, this is, I don't know, I even know how to say this, but when the, every, a lot of guys were getting lit up for sexual misconduct, mm -hmm. and uh, one of the things that I heard women say was, uh, which was is interesting because I've always felt this way, but I guess not everyone has. And by the way, if this is a Me Too, you're going to lose almost all male comics not me because i've been married but 
it's you shouldn't fuck your fans. And so, like, that's the number. That's what one. they're saying. That's the number one. Oh, you shouldn't be. Cons- I think I don't. I know a female comic said you shouldn't be put under threat by by just one. But just because you like someone's comedy doesn't mean they have the right to slide into your DMs and try to fuck you. Oh, right. And I, I think a lot of com- a lot of a lot of male comics got into comedy to fuck women. That's it. I think you're totally right. I, I would say a hundred percent. And and I feel like we really missed out. I missed out. So bad. We didn't get to ride any of our no. popular. But I also think there's a lot of male comics that just get into it. Just, it feels like some of the, especially the ones that are constantly on tour, they got into it to maybe just escape their demons, right? Or to somehow um, occupy their mind, especially if they're suffering from some sort of mental illness or some kind of depression or they have some sort of trauma that they, they, they've, you know, they've kind of haven't dealt with. They, the road is sort of like an escape from that, right? It's a way to kind of reinvent yourself every stop, right? To reintroduce yourself to new characters who you won't see again, um, to kind of leave a bit of yourself out there in the abyss. So I kind of, it's just an odd thing to kind of rectify from the outside looking in. And part of me also thinks like, it's also similar to workplaces, right? You shouldn't really get with anybody at work, but how many times have you been in, what, how many offices have I been in where there's, you know, been more than two couples? Plenty. And it makes complete sense, right? Spending what, eight hours a day in an office, right? Especially if you're a small team, um, working with people that are of age, right? For the most part, um, you're bound to kind of develop some feeling for some people. You're bound to look at some people, you know, in a weird, different light, be like, hmm, do you know? Like, it's bound to happen. Because you, cause you, it's a rare occasion where you actually get to know somebody, you know, over a long period of time, right? This is not like some Tinder hookup or someone sliding into your DM. It's actually somebody who actually, you know, you sort of like uh, built some rapport with you've kind of built a friendship and that's maybe led to other things so that happens quite often so i'd imagine if anything these groupies or these fans are sliding into some of these comedians dms probably know them especially from the content they consume of theirs on podcasts and stuff they probably know them a lot more than their own friends right they're, they're, they're obsessed with these people they follow them you know wherever they go across the country um, they're always on their Instagram. They listen to every podcast they're on. Like they're really consuming every bit of content they put out there. So it can be difficult if you're um, the talent or whatever to suddenly then step away and be like, oh, you know what? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get involved in this person because they're a fan. It's just difficult to pull that plug. It really is. Again, obviously, this isn't justifying going and hooking up with bloody children. Do you know what I mean? Or purposely trying to hook up with somebody that's um that could pass for somebody that might be underage because that's really weird especially if you think that might happen with crystalia but i don't know man it's an interesting topic really because again i don't think a lot of these guys have a suffer i think a lot of them probably have to fend off housewives but it is interesting to think especially with these newer sort of like instagram comedians how they handle the fame how they handle having groupies that actually look like groupies right and not just you know middle-aged women who kind of want to get out for the night and have a bit of cheeky fun I wonder. I bloody wonder. Anyways, I think that might be it, you know. That's episode.